So Apple's just released their latest iPads this past week, both the M2 iPad Pro and the new baseline iPad. I've been rocking my iPad Air 4 since 2020, and while it's definitely a more recent iPad, I figured I'd still give the M2 Pro a try. But one thing I've noticed in early reviews is that everyone simply keeps comparing it to last year's iPad Pro. And while I can acknowledge the benefit of buying one of those secondhand, it doesn't really give this iPad a full shot at a dedicated and deserving review. It's like saying the new Ferrari is lame because it's only slightly better than the last Ferrari, but like, dude, it's a Ferrari, it's still super cool. And as someone who doesn't get a new iPad every year, I figured it'd be okay to approach this iPad as someone who's upgrading from an older one or somebody who's new to the iPad space entirely. So here's a review of the M2 iPad Pro from someone who doesn't have a new iPad every year. From gaming to creation, here's how I use the M2 iPad Pro. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Here I cover gaming, tech, and a few things in between. If you dig the video, hit the like button. If you love it, a sub goes a long way. And if you don't, your pillow will never have a cool side ever again. And thanks to channel sponsor Anchor for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, so jumping right into the unboxing, there really ain't much to it as always. There's less and less in these boxes nowadays, but this is the 11 inch base model, which comes at 128 gigs of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. For me, that's plenty enough. And on the inside, you've got the M2 iPad Pro itself, a nice braided USB-C to C cable. And yes, it does come with a charging brick. The one included is only a measly 20 watts, but it'll still do the job. In terms of getting the set up, I always do an iCloud backup and transfer over, which takes maybe 20 minutes, depending on how much stuff you have. But once you're done, everything, including settings, is all transferred over. And mostly, I attempt to be a digital minimalist. If I don't use an app for about a month or so, I usually end up deleting it. For me, an organized iPad keeps me organized since I use my iPad daily for just about everything, including work, YouTube, gaming, and relaxation. Alongside my studio display though, to make this a better desktop experience, today's sponsor Anchor really helped. They sent me out two of their USB-C hubs which pair perfectly with both the new iPads alongside the previous gen iPads like the M1 Pro and M1 Air. And that easily makes it the ultimate multitasking hub for the new iPads in iPadOS 16. The Anchor 551 hub in my main setup really ties together the desktop experience with the M2 iPad Pro, offering eight additional ports I wouldn't otherwise have. The Anchor 551 hub is actually a foldable 8-in-1 stand that includes both an SD and micro SD card slot for accessing files and footage. And since the introduction of external monitors with Stage Manager, we're able to connect up to a 4K 60Hz display with the HDMI port. This is what allowed me to test my ultra-wide monitor support. With pass-through charging, a headphone jack, and two additional USB-A ports, this ties together the rest of any desktop setup and frankly lets you get more out of your iPad, especially on the go. And it's also the world's first USB-C hub that's also a foldable stand designed for iPads. If you really need portability though, the Anchor 541 hub offers you the flexibility of USB-A, 4K 60Hz HDMI, Type-C charging, and both SD and mini SD card slots. For me, this is the most compact and powerful hub for the new iPads and iPadOS 16. The new M2 iPad pairs extraordinarily well with the Anchor 551 and 541 hubs, as well as the previous M1 Pro and Air models. Find out more down below in the video description or simply search Anchor Hub for iPad and thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this portion of the video. And let's talk about the design real quick since unsurprisingly the iPad Pro line remains beautiful. Honestly, although I don't want to compare it heavily to the old ones, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this one still looks great. The bezels are ultra thin and the sharp edges, for me at least, are a pleasure to hold. This tablet in hand is really super light and not that you'd ever really do this, but it can stand up upright on its own. The camera housing or bump isn't so large either and it doesn't bump or rock at all on a hard surface. Overall though, the design here is flawless. Everyone gets so used to the way iPads look year over year and it's easy to forget that the design and aesthetics still hold up really well. And underneath it all, inside this thin and light tablet is a whole lot of power which I will get into soon. But I want to talk about features first since this will make or break whether all that power even gets used and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. There's definitely some key new features with this iPad and it's debatable whether it could have been on an iPad much sooner, but that's the new pencil hover feature. When watching the press release, frankly, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick, but actually, and I don't know why, I've really grown to enjoy this feature. I think it might be just hovering over menu items and having it be highlighted really helps in my experience. And since I'm actually a professional artist, I'm gonna benefit huge from this. But from 7 a.m. through the entire day, I'm on the Notes app while working my day job as well as typing, drawing, and drafting up YouTube videos, and I didn't expect to appreciate the pencil hover feature. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but it's still a welcome feature and I imagine a lot more artists and creatives will see more benefit than I will. One thing I don't like though is the fact that you gotta dish out an extra 130 bucks to buy into this feature on an 800 tablet that can be a little bit steep. But another one of the new features I'm really loving is Stage Manager. Again, one of the features I didn't care for at the beginning and here I am really enjoying it and it actually has 
be super excited. Since testing this iPad Pro, I've legit been using it all week on my studio display as a desktop setup. What Stage Manager does is allow you to get more of a desktop-like experience through your iPad, but also having resizable windows and use an external display. Previously, you'd only be able to mirror the same display, but this way you can have a full-fledged external monitor, which is a game changer. And I did test an ultra-wide setup, which didn't work at first, so I gave up. But quickly I realized it was actually just my cable, and turns out the iPad Pro literally has ultra-wide support. This is absolutely nuts. Even my buddies were a little bit surprised, and I really dig it. It's hard to put it into words, but it's a desktop experience that's definitely unique to the iPad. And whether you like it or not, it's really up to the user, but I was and still am excited to use this feature. It's actually different enough from macOS that it's still a little bit weird to use, but we're definitely going in the right direction. But getting back to the rest of the features on the M2 iPad, you've still got some other notable features, though not all of them are available yet. I'm mostly excited for DaVinci Resolve, which is expected later this quarter. I think this will be the first desktop class program available on any iPad, and some people are die-hard DaVinci fans. While I personally love my Final Cut Pro, I'm super pumped to film and edit an entire video start to finish on this iPad. And I can't wait to see what other programs make it to iPad over the next couple years. Some honorable mentions in features is I gotta mention the LiDAR scanner is actually pretty cool for 3D scans. Not that I've ever really used that, but I'm one of those people that use the Measure app a lot, and the LiDAR scanner definitely helps with the accuracy, so I really can't complain. And lastly, the Wi-Fi 6E is a new feature. This depends totally on your connection, but yeah, the Wi-Fi speeds are pretty fast. I mentioned it before, but inside this beautiful and thin tablet is a whole lot of power. The M2 chip inside this tablet is just so, so powerful, to the point where I don't even know where you can use all that power. And while you might not fully realize a benefit from the M2 chip right off the bat, it sure as heck future proof use, especially for those pro apps that might be coming down the road like DaVinci. This iPad definitely doesn't skip a beat, but frankly, neither does my 2020 iPad Air. At the base model, it comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, although the one terabyte and two terabyte variants come with 16 gigs of RAM, which is absolutely nuts. Even with eight gigabytes of RAMs, my apps stay loaded for ages in the back end, and even if they do close, it boots up super quick. Spec-wise though, this is almost on par with the new M2 MacBooks, if only there was a way to use all the power on this iPad. And while I'm not much of a gamer, there are definitely some good options nowadays, and it performs extraordinarily well. I can't say there was a single dropped frame or anything at all and the controller support is improving across so many games too. And mostly while gaming, that's where I really noticed the marvel that's the display on this iPad. I've had ProMotion high refresh displays on my MacBook Pro and on my iPhone, and it's no less impressive on the iPad. I wasn't actually expecting this display to be as good as it is, and while my 11-inch model only peaks at 600 nits of brightness, the 12.9-inch model does support an XDR display with up to 1600 nits of brightness. That's cool and all, but for me, the 11-inch is definitely a good size, and display is more than adequate for me. Although it's not an OLED display like a lot of tech, it's still a great display that looks wonderful in its own right. I do want to touch on the camera, mic, speakers, and battery since they are a big part of what makes this iPad great. Usually I'm up to date with my tech, but I actually didn't know the Pro iPad line had Face ID, and out of blocks, that was definitely a pleasant surprise. Personally, I prefer this over Touch ID. I did have to get used to not blocking the Face ID sensor though. And while the camera is largely just a 12 megapixel ultra wide, it's just an okay camera and still gets the job done. I did notice how grainy and noisy the footage is in lower light situations, so to really get the most out of the 4K footage I use, I have to get as much light as possible. I don't really ever see anyone using this as a camera rig as an Apple showcase, but here I did use it for a second to get an extra angle while filming my main angle. For the front camera though, center stage is still cool when you need to make calls, but there's just so much distortion on the edges. For every inch I move out of center, my chin gets more and more manly and massive. The mic does a good enough job on its own, but if you really need to make this a really good setup or want some proper voiceover quality, your best bet would be to plug in a better quality mic. This one is the Blue Yeti hooked up to my Anchor 551 hub. And for the speakers, they're shockingly loud. I was actually surprised to see how loud they can get while still remaining clear. It's rather impressive for such a thin and tiny piece of tech. The stereo setup did take some getting used to though. The way I hold my iPad, I always end up covering one or both of the speakers, just something to keep in mind. I'll keep the battery mega short since this will vary wildly from user to user, but for me, it lasts a full day and partially into the next day. Either way, I'm always near a charger, so I haven't really had to tax the battery too much. Compared to my iPad Air 4 though, it at least takes me into the next day. So who's gonna be buying this iPad? Honestly, anyone who's due for a well-sized upgrade. I think someone who maybe has an iPad older than the Air 4 from 2020. Lots of people think it's silly to pay 800 bucks for this tablet and $299 for the Magic Keyboard case. And to those people, it's absolutely silly since they're likely better geared to get a MacBook for the same price. I personally know some minimalists who will rock a flip phone as their daily driver, but then also have an iPad as their main computer on the side. And this is pre-stage manager. So for someone like that, this is an absolute massive upgrade. 
Overall though, there's a whole lot of power here that I kind of feels underutilized. It's kind of like buying a pickup truck to only ever get groceries. Totally overkill, but hey, if you like it, get it. In pure honesty though, I went into this expecting a boring iPad due to the early reviews, but I came out feeling excited about it as someone with an older iPad. And again, while my overall experience remains largely the same, I know I'm super future proof for the next series of programs launching on this iPad. And until then, I'm gonna enjoy the stage manager, promotion display, and a whole lot of power. Thanks again to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Check out the Anchor 551 and 541 USB-C hubs down below in the video description or simply search Anchor Hub for iPad. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks again for watching. Till next time.